Good morning, my name is uh, Grant Bourne from ASD, yes, it's Security Distribution Limited, and this is a small webinar on how to set up uh, the March Networks um, IP cameras. Um, so we'll be uh, going through all the steps required, how to configure and set up a IP camera and connect it through to your DVR or NVR, and how you set up on the software side of things. This is taken into account that the camera's already connected and powered on. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is to actually try and find the March Networks uh, IP camera on the network. So if it's connected to the same network as your, as your laptop or your PC that you're using to configure it. Um, we basically use a uh, application called VideoSphere Browser Software, which is um, actually comes on the CD with uh, any March Networks IP camera or can be downloaded from our help desk. And if you click on the search button, it'll actually search the entire network for any March Networks, March Network IP devices, uh, even if they're on a different subnet, and we'll display them in this window. And it will display uh, the model of the number, what that device actually is, the MAC address, the IP address, uh, the name that you've given it, plus what version firmware is running. Now we can click on any one of these devices and easily just change the IP address by entering the IP address here and clicking uh, send config and then typing in the username and password. The username and password for all March Networks IP devices by default is the same, which is admin with no password. Once you've uh, configured the IP address the device uh, to the one that you want to use, and you, it's obviously your uh, laptop or PC is running on the same IP range, you can then access the device uh, through a browser. Um, now for March Networks devices it has to be Internet Explorer as it uses ActiveX. So what we'll do is we'll bring up um, Internet Explorer and go through to the IP address as one of the cameras. So we'll choose uh, this microphone here and we can see that the IP address is 192.168.3.13. So we'll just type that into the browser. I'll come up and ask for a username and password. Um, as mentioned before, the username and password for March Networks IP devices as admin and password. We click connect. Uh, this will then uh, come up with uh, basically the display for that particular camera. Uh, the first time you access a camera, I'll come up and ask if you want to run the following add-on or install the ActiveX control. And we'll click allow. And then what should happen is we should see the image from the camera coming up on our screens. Now if we want to blow this image up to full page, we can double click on it and it will blow the image up to full, full page. And if we want to zoom in on the image, we can just use the scroll bar on the mouse to zoom in or out. Uh, now the first thing we want to do is obviously go to the setup page for the camera so that we can adjust its settings. I've got the setup page, we'll put in the IP address of the camera. 196.3.13 backslash setup backslash that will take us up to the setup page again it will ask if we use an admin password put an admin without a password this will take us into the camera setup page now from here we can do a number of things if we want to uh, be able to see the image that's appearing on the camera we can click on this little link here and it will display an image on the what's currently showing from that particular camera. Um, from here we can obviously do a firmware upgrade if we click on device management we can click on firmware upgrade click on browse and basically just browse to the directory where the firmware upgrade is located click on upgrade and upgrade the firmware on that particular camera. If we come through to system and go to users, this is where we can uh, adjust the uh, users that can access the camera. By the top, there's only one crowd called admin, out of password, who has uh, full access. Uh, this is where we adjust the date and time. Um, and as you see, we've got several choices. We can either force device local time, synchronize to the client time, which is the computer accessing it from, or use an NTP uh, time sync. You'll actually put in the NTP time server um, below in the network settings. If we click on connections here, this will show the amount of connections to the camera or the amount of uh, devices or computers that are connected to the camera, uh, the IP address they're connected from, the bandwidth and what protocol they're using. Um, now this is very useful because some March Networks IP cameras only allow a limited number of connections at any one time and this is a useful way to see uh, how many connections are actually on the camera. Plus if you see a connection there that you don't 
want to be using the camera or shouldn't be using the camera, you can actually just click on that connection and click on disconnect client and it will disconnect them from the camera. Um, LDAP, this is for uh, integrating the camera into your active uh, directories if you want, so or you can just use the same username and uh, password you're using for basic your Windows login to actually log into the camera and get access to it. Uh, most of the time we will, those settings won't be used because you'll be accessing the camera through a DVR. The next section we'll go through is the network settings and this is where we set all the uh, network settings for the specific IP camera. Uh, this is where we set the IP address, the subnet mask, and the gateway, which is optional. Uh, if we want to be able to access the camera, for example, over the internet, and it's on a uh, dynamic uh, IP address, we can actually give uh, the, the, the network camera a domain name, and this is where we define what domain, domain name servers want that camera to use. Here's the NTP setting, if you're using the NTP time sync to time sync the, the camera, you can choose into manual or DHCP. If you have manual, we can put in any NTP time server that you're currently using. Um, we'll leave the other settings back uh, without going into them because they're not normally used, and we'll come down to video and go to encoders. Now, this is where you set up the camera on how you want to encode the video and how many streams you want that particular camera to produce. Most much networks IP cameras can produce up to uh, two streams, video streams, and they can either be uh, H.264, uh, H.264 on a JPEG, two H.264, H.264 streams, or two JPEG streams. Now this is useful if you want to, for example, display one stream on a display monitor at a uh, high frame rate, high resolution, and want to record it at a lower resolution, or vice versa if you want to record on, say, one BDR at a high resolution and then record, say, another remote BDR at a lower resolution or a lower frame rate. Uh, this is where normally, most of the time, we'll only be using just one stream uh, from the IP camera. So we just keep this on an H.264 for now. Now this is where we put in the name of our primary stream and obviously we'll give it a name that's fitting to the camera for whatever the camera's being used for. Uh, this is where we set that the resolution that the camera's actually being used at. Now most of the time we'll be using the camera at its highest resolution, uh, but for example with this camera is a 3 megapixel camera, we can even set it to uh, 1080 to give us a 16 by 9 look. Now when reducing a 3 megapixel camera from a 3 megapixel to 1080, all you're really doing is just chopping the top and bottom off of the camera. So if I change that to uh, 1080p and click on submit, and we bring our little uh, video display up the side, we can see that all it's really done with the image once it comes up is just chop off the top and bottom. So this is basically if you want the camera to more focus uh, on the specific field of view rather than getting, for example, too much ceiling or too much floor space. And if we switch that back to 3 megapixel, you'll see it will go back through to 4x3 instead of 16x9. The IPS is where we set the frame rate for the camera. Um, this is a 3 megapixel camera. Most of the time, we'll probably be setting it for about 6 frames per second. Um, but rate mode, you can either choose constant or variable. Now, this is important because it depends on how you want the bandwidth, the camera to use the bandwidth. Most of the time, we recommend settings to constant and then setting a specific bandwidth because then you'll know that's the uh, bandwidth that the camera will always use. And it won't go any higher than that. If you choose a variable bit rate, if you don't put a maximum bit rate cap on here or if it's fairly high, the variable bit rate can go uh, quite, quite high depending on how much movement or comp complex imagery is within the camera. Um, so again, we recommend definitely setting that constant, and for a, say, a 3 megapixel camera, we'd set that to about 4, 4, uh, 4 megabits, so, you know, 4,096 kilobits per second. Um, for a 1080, probably about 2, 2 megabits. Uh, for about, for a 720, maybe about 1 megabit. Um, and we just leave the keyframe interval at its default setting. Now the next thing we'll have a look is the uh, camera sensor, and this is basically how we want the camera to deal with the picture. 
Most of the time we would leave these settings pretty much by default unless it's a WDR camera such as this one in which case we can adjust the WDR range from uh, off, auto, minimum, low all the way to high or max depending on how much uh, backlight or uh, wide dynamic lighting is within the image. We shouldn't need to adjust the shutter time um, except if the, obviously if the camera is located inside you would set this to auto 50 hertz being New Zealand if it's outside or looking at an outside scene you would set this to low. Everything else should remain the same. Probably the only other thing you would look at changing is the mirror mode and this is for whatever reason you have the camera mounted upside down or sideways you can choose to flip the camera around vertically, horizontally or in both directions to account for that. Um, privacy patches, this lets us set uh, specific privacy patches within the image, for example if there's a logo or a billboard that we want blocked out. Here's we set the motion detection. Most of the time the motion detection set up on the camera as it is works fairly well, um, but we can set up um, different zones and also the sensitivity and threshold. And we've also got to make sure that if we want motion detection on the camera enabled through on the DVR, that the alarm has to be enabled, which it is by default. So, bring the camera through, uh, you'll see that the whole image is highlighted uh, for motion detection, but we can draw specific zones where we want to monitor motion on. For example, that can be zone 1, this can be zone 2, and we can set up different sensitivity and threshold for each of those specific zones. And to submit them, just click submit them. Um, most March Network's IP cameras are also capable of inputting or outputting audio, and this can be integrated with the uh, DVR so you can use the camera as an inter intercom system, or if you just want to record audio, just be aware there is a lot of legalities about recording audio in New Zealand, you should look those up before applying. And again, it's fairly straightforward. You just click on yes, the frequency, the volume, and what sort of codec you want to use, depending on what type of DVR you're wanting to use. And the same with the talk side of things, you can choose if you want to active, what frequency, or what codec you want to use. Uh, again, all our uh, March Networks IP cameras have an auxiliary in and out that uh, can be used to trigger specific events. So, for example, based on motion detection, you can have it. Uh, basically trigger a specific event or you can have something trigger something on the camera for example if you have a read switch on the door when that closes you have that as the auxiliary in and it can trigger for the camera to record or to speed up its frame rate or whatever else or you can actually incorporate that back at the DVR end to trigger all sorts of events. Um, on the storage side of things um, you can actually the cameras are capable of having an SD card um, inserted into them and this is where this is set up so that the video will be re recording an SD card. They can also be set to record to a NAS as well. So if you have a uh, NAS system on the network, you can actually set the camera to record to NAS and you can choose uh, what type of sharing you want to use, the username, password and path. If you've got an SD card in, um, it will come up here and you can obviously format it or enable it. And the cameras can handle up to a 32 gig um, SD card. Um, one thing to mention is that if you're using the March Networks IP cameras with a command, uh, March Networks command system or 7000 series DVR, they do support what's called shadow archiving, which means that if for any reason the camera loses connection from the server or the DVR, it will actually start recording onto the SD card. Um, and then uh, once that links back up, it will send all that, uh, all that video that's recording the SD card Back with, the, back with the DVR. Also, unlike uh, most other cameras, IP cameras, the much less IP cameras can actually access all the footage on the SD card uh, through the camera's web page, and this is for playback, uh, even searching through and exporting footage. Um, now, obviously, the first thing you want to do with an IP camera is obviously after you set the encoders and uh, all the settings in here is to actually focus the camera. And there's a number of tools available to allow you to do this, such as the recipe pinpoint tool. Um, one bit of advice for when focusing on a key camera is you can actually um, change the frames per second up to a really high frame rate, so that when you're focusing the camera, um, you can actually get a really good quick response on what's happening on the camera side of things. If we just quickly flip through to the full uh, page now, 
I'll show you a little trick used for focusing cameras. So if you bring up this page when you're focusing a camera, you just blow it up to full screen and then actually to zoom in on a specific point and then focus on that specific point and then visually zoom back out and you'll see that the rest of the image will come right into focus. As always, when you're focusing an IP camera, you should always use a uh, MD filter as well uh, to make sure that you're facing the camera with your eyes open so that when the, when the camera goes to light at night time, the image is going to remain in focus. Um, the other things that we suggest is if you're using an IP camera in an indoor area, you should use a manual iris lens as to get the best picture out of uh, an IP camera. The more light going into the camera, the better the image of the camera itself. So when you're using a manual iris camera, you can actually open up the iris uh, to quite a high degree without it closing down automatically and get a really good picture out of it. Uh, so that's the section on setting up an IP camera on your computer and assigning an IP address and just going through some of the settings available. In our next uh, webinar that we'll be hosting, we'll be going through on how to connect that uh, IP camera through to a March Networks um, DDR 4000 series and how you should set things up on that side. But one more important thing is that obviously you want to focus the camera um, and if you have raised the frames per second, remember to lower it again um, before you close the camera down or before you be able to get out of the, the setup to make sure it's running at the right proper frame rate for that particular site. So thank you very much uh, for um, looking at this particular webinar and join us again for our next one on the National CDR next month, which will be in our next newsletter. Thanks again. Bye.